we can do this together if we all stand together we can do this together if we all stand together we can do this together if we all Get your slideshow done. Well, you're going to see in a second. That's true. Um, actually, it was it's been interesting. Yes, last week, the 23rd, I think it was Friday, was the release of the new um, SNAP rule for the year. So we'll talk. We'll talk a little bit about that today. I see a lot of people have joined. And um, let's make sure we get everybody's uh, audio connected and make sure everybody can see the video. We'll go through the rules. It'll go quick. Um, All right, what time are we looking at here? Okay, we're just like a minute past 2.30. I want to make sure everybody can uh, see this, the screen. It should say welcome. Thanks for joining. Um, if you've participated in these in the past, pretty simple rules. Uh, the only rule is just stay muted until you have something to share. And anyone uh, is welcome to share at any time if you want to stop. Um, but you can also use the chat box, which is up at the top. And uh, Elizabeth, Steve, and I will answer questions. If the one of the three of us don't have an answer, well, we will get it for you. So April is a great month to talk about SNAP, uh, a significant new alternative program. So if you guys are okay with the rules and no one has any problems with the audio or video, I'm going to jump in and get started. Um, if if you're not familiar with SNAP and it's your first time hearing about it, or you are, regardless, if you've you're aware of it, but it's been several years um, since you you visited SNAP 20 and 21, these are probably the two most talked about uh, SNAP policies ever shared or uh, deployed by the EPA. These relate specifically to HFCs. We're going to talk about how those may affect us today and, and in the future as well. Um, my name is Ted Atwood. They give me the title of Chief Refrigerant Geek, but I, I really share all of this knowledge with Elizabeth and Steve and, and we work on it as a team. So there's a lot of information gathering. Steve's been doing this for quite a while. He's got me beat. I'm happy to let him have the title for oldest guy on the call. Um, and Elizabeth wins the title for youngest person as part of any policy team on this. So we're, we're all, we all work really well together. And um, we're going we're gonna to give you guys a basic understanding of SNAP. And like I said, use the comment section. <clears throat> I will stop the call um, if I'm on a discussion and a topic that you guys need some deeper information. All right, so pretty self-explanatory. This is uh, EPA's program where they allow refrigerants into use in the market. And we'll call this um, probably the most, the least well-known of all of the EPA's uh, refrigerant management tools, but it's one of the most important and one you should become very familiar with. <clears throat> um, it was originally started related to the uh, ozone depleting substances being phased out and it was done under EPA 612. There are two, two categories here that the EPA pays attention to. One are the conditions that impact an allowance 
And this is a summary of what those are. There are, there are four categories uh, that are conditions. Environment, exposure health, toxicity, flammability. And there's actually another one called other. And what that's referring to is if there are any other environmental issues, um, they're addressed under the conditions. And then based on the impact from these, these conditions, the refrigerants are given an allowance, um, either acceptable, uh, acceptable with conditions, and we'll go through that, acceptable with very narrow use limits, and then unacceptable altogether, where you're not supposed to use it, period. Sorry, no questions so far. SNAP has been around since 1995. Um, this is actually a snapshot of the first SNAP publication. And uh, I still have a copy of that. And it's been scanned in and it's got all kinds of notes on it. But um, you can see at the time, 405 was no longer available. Uh, and if I remember correctly, 405 was a combination of a CFC and an HCFC. I don't remember the specifics, uh, but I think it was, now there it is right there, 318 was in it, but I believe there was something else in there with it. All right, well, that's just a little bit of nostalgia. Um, because I was around for that one, I was a lot younger in those days. Uh, and also I was even uh, younger when you consider the fact that these two SNAP programs uh, were 2015 and 2016. So if you're on this call and you don't remember um, what specifically were in 2015 and what was going on 2015, 2016, well, here you go. Um, essentially, 2015's SNAP 20 was primarily related, and this is Elizabeth's uh, statement, she, she put it well, was re really related to refrigeration. Um, there is some refrigeration impact in 2016, but uh, leaving the foams and aerosols aside from 2015, it's primarily refrigeration that, that got the brunt of this um, SNAP approval and um, unacceptable process. And there are dates that relate when the EPA publishes these, they don't just publish them with you know, an end date of that calendar year. Um, the 2015 requirement, for instance, phased out the allowance of 404 retrofits in 2016 and 2017, and then banned the use of remote condensing units related to those materials. And this is a very summarized statement. And that's what we do on these open mics. We're, we're super high level on these topics. It's meant to socialize the topic so that people can feel comfortable with what's happening or trending or what they need to be aware of. And that's why during this call, there is no such thing as, as a, a bad question to ask uh, because we may not be giving you enough details, but that's done on purpose. We just want to familiarize you with what's happening and, and have a conversation. Um, SNAP 20 and 21 or 2015 and 16, the 2016 one put restrictions in place on probably a material that no one on this call has ever used like 443A, but then some others like 404A, 407, A and B, as well as C uh, and D and F, 410A, 507, these are the most common restrictions here. Um, 134A was no longer allowed in centrifugals as of 2024, for instance. So um, I wanted to share with you some idea of how far out some of these, uh, these limitation windows are, are scheduled. And this is basically eight years from when this is published. Uh, one of the refrigeration sectors to be hit in 2016 was cold storage, um, cold storage warehousing, it's very important, and also a ban on foam. Um, and so this uh, SNAP 21 may have some serious adjustments in it going forward because the foam issue has been addressed on some of these uh, relative to the AIM Act. So we'll see how those that collision of 
of our overlap impacts each other. But um, anyone who's on the call will share with you after the call, the SNAP 20 and 21 full sheets from the EPA. They're EPA sheets, they're not ours, and they're easily accessible and we'll let you know where to find those. And the last one that doesn't get talked about a lot are automobiles ban on 134A, which was scheduled for 2021. Um, the automotive companies have been making a heavy investment in um, HFOs anyways, and the new AIM Act will likely accelerate that. Does anyone have any questions about either SNAP 20 or 21? I said I had one if I could. Sure. Um, why, why is it that the, the 2015, you have your ban. Um, so how's about we talk about those HFCs? Just read the facts if you don't believe me. Watch your leakage, disposal, and recycle. It's key.